We're gonna do two movie style lighting setups, one night, one day, same room, no lights over 100 watts. Now this video is not sponsored, but I was sent two M20 lights from Jiyun as well as the new X60 RGB light. And I thought it'd be a great opportunity to walk you through two narrative lighting setups, just very sort of raw, you being able to hear my thought processes as I tweak, as I adjust, and as I make choices and just see why I'm making choices. But I wanted to limit myself to using only the lights that Jiyun sent me. We're gonna try them out. We're gonna see what their best use cases are and we are going to push them to their limits. First things first, I like to set up sort of the ambiance of the room. So whatever level I want my shadows and my room contrast ratio to be at, I set that first. So right now I'm at 180th of a shutter because I just don't want to use ND right now. Uh, I'm at ISO 160, 3400 Kelvin because I want it to be cool, ambient light to be cool. And then I want um, still a little bit of warmth from some lamps. So we're going to do sort of a heightened, moody, almost euphoria type look here. I want to use the light from Jiyun, so I'm going to black out uh, as much of this as I can. I've got these like a suction cup blackout curtain things for babies. Let's use clamps. Okay, that is good enough for me. Now I'm going to add the Jiyun light just to get sort of a room ambiance. I've got this little silicon diffusion bulb thing on it. Uh, just get a little bit softer, less harsh light bouncing off the ceiling here. So I've got it set to sort of a blue temperature here. We're probably gonna have to adjust a little bit. There we go. Okay, so you can see here, we've got a little more ambiance in the room. It's not like realistic per se, and it doesn't really look like what real moonlight looks like, but it's gonna be sort of a cool stylized effect. On to the next, let's set up our Key light, I have the Jiyun Molis X100 over here, keeping that Jiyun family today. So let's first turn on our practical lights just so we can get a little bit of motivation for the warm light that I'm setting up over here. So I've got this like alarm clock lamp here and uh, I'm just gonna use that. I'm gonna turn it so it's sort of bouncing off the wall a little bit here, not too much. Let me turn this guy off. The reason I'm not doing that real lamp is it's just very, finicky. It's one of these touch lamps and it just is terrible. The nice thing here is this touch lamp doesn't work at all. And so I'm going to be using one of the M20s from Jiyun and I've got it dialed into about the same sort of orangeness as that uh, alarm clock lamp. And the nice thing is this has magnets on the back of it. So I can literally just plop it in there like it's a lamp, which is Pretty insane design. I totally forgot that. And then I was setting it up and I was like, oh wait, I can just use this. So here's where we're at now. Again, you notice I haven't set up my key light even yet. Um, I'm just trying to get levels of the room where I want them and to a state that's looking good for me. Because it's easy to add light. Like if we wanna bring up the levels of the room, it's very easy to do that. It's not so easy to subtract light. You know, that's why sound stages are pitch black because you can bring in light very easily, but subtracting light, you know, you need blackout curtains and stuff like that, which I don't really have more of. So yeah, it's easier to just start dark and then almost paint with light on a black canvas. That's how I like to do it at least. And then the other thing is that if you start with sort of all the lights on, all the lights that you have in mind, it's harder to problem solve the variables. Like if one light is spilling too much, it's, you're go you gotta be kidding me. Uh, that's the thing about these Geons, I'll be honest. I like that they have a battery option, but the batteries only last like an hour, hour and a half. So uh, when I was planning out this scene, I kind of used up all the batteries. So no big deal. Plugging in lights is something we've done for a long, long, long time. I am setting up a mini soft box with a egg crate grid. You're gonna see why. It's really just because I wanna keep this shadowy blue ambiance for the room. And I want to sort of counteract it with sort of a warm tungsten-y look for my key here. And yeah, I just want to keep it separate. Um, looking at the monitor here, first off this background light, it's not working out. Gotta raise that up, there we go. Let's see a little bit more of this lamp. So it just looks cool. It looks like something out of Dune or something. Now this key light. Oh wow, somehow this is, this lamp is at 100%. Okay, 
Okay, bring it in closer. We are in the shot. Let's tilt it up a little bit so it's a little more on my face. Truck it back a little bit. Let's do a little more side lit. Yeah, I'm liking that. And that's nice and dramatic. And we're still getting a little bit of Rembrandt there. But we need to turn back on our fill light. And again, this is an unconventional fill. I think it's going to look cool. And once we got this wide shot, we're going to move in for our close up. Let's bring this in around to the side a little more. Let's pull it down a little bit and then tilt it up a little bit. So it looks less like a, you know, softbox key light and more like a, you know, some sort of source in the room. And that's looking pretty cool. I want to get a little more background light here. So let's go back to that reflection. That's cool. Okay, I'm good with all this. I think uh, I think this blue light is a little bit much. And just so you can see what this light is, it's got this little silicon diffusion on it. Again, I just don't want it too harsh as it bounces off the ceiling. Um, let me take a look. Yeah, let's just try to get it a little more subtle. So I'm push, I'm pointing it a little more this way so that it's more sort of a blue glow that's filling in the shadows. Like it's literally fill here. I don't want it overpowering, but we still got this nice shadowy look. You can see here that I've got my ratios exactly as I wanted them. I didn't light everything first and then look at this and be like, oh, I wanted the shadows to be a little bit darker. Everything from here is about bringing in light. Okay, so now we've got the shot. I'm just gonna look at you and be dreamy. It's very stylized and heightened, but you know, looks cool. Okay, let's move in for the close up. The coward's way out is like, just leave it as it is because we lit it well for the wide shot, but I don't like the way that it is. And uh, I think it could be improved. So let's improve it. This is the thing, when you move in for the close up, it doesn't need to be exactly the same. You can sort of pretty it up, make it a little more striking, make it more uh, dramatic, or you can make it more realistic in this case. All right, so what I'm doing there is I'm moving the key light uh, more to the side to be a little more dramatic, a little more uh, opposite camera, upstage lighting here. I'm still not loving it. I'm just not loving the quality of light and it's a little too shadowy for my taste. So what I'm gonna do, just a little five in one diffusion here. Um, it's gonna spill a little more onto the rest of the set, but that's okay because we're filming a close up, so it doesn't matter. And that has cut the light significantly. So we can't quite do that. So let me change my shutter to 150th. That's brought up our levels a little bit. Can bump up the ISO a little bit there. Oh, too much. Just totally changes the look. Problem is I'm at, I think I'm at 100 on that light and that Zhiyun. Let's leave the ISO where it is. Let me take off the egg crate. See how much level that brings in. I'm gonna truck the light in a little bit too. Nice, let me move the diffusion a little bit closer to me so that we're getting a nicer kind of wrap there. It is spilling a bit onto the background more than I would want. So we can put a little bit of the egg crate back on. So we'll just sort of put the egg crate on half of it. I don't know if you can see that. Cool, I'm happy with that. In fact, I think we can even uh, go back to 180th all right, let's do 160 for shutter. Just get those levels down a little bit there. Okay, dramatic pose.
Okay, we're gonna do an interior day sunny. So again, I like to set the levels of the room. Uh, you know, what do I want my window to be at? What do I want my sort of shadows to be at? So I put some ND on the 50 millimeter, it's F 1.8. Um, and let's go ahead and stop it down until I get the sort of exterior level where I want it. Yeah, right about there, just below clipping. Lots of nice kind of interesting shadows in the room. And again, we can always bring it up. Now, this is a different situation from the last one in that in the last scene, you know, we started on a black canvas. The problem here is that our black canvas is competing with a big window, so we need bright light. I have challenged myself to only use these two Xeon lights. One of them is a 100 watt, one of them is a 60 watt. So that's not a ton of light, but let's see what we can do here. And I am at white balance 5,500 Kelvin. Let's go ahead and strike this light. This is the X60. All right, and so what I'm doing here is, again, the light is not coming from outside this direction. It's actually going the other direction. But the reason why I'm showing a window in this scene is to imply, hey, there's natural light coming into this room. So you don't know that the sun's not coming through. I mean, really, it's pretty much overcast right now. You know, there's no master shot. This is just a cinematic daytime shot of just me. I'm the only subject in this scene, so we can cheat a little bit here. So what I'm doing here is I have uh, my X60. I've set it to daylight temp. I've matched it to the window colors. I used a little color picker and made sure it was a perfect RGB match. It's at 100%. What I'm doing here is there's a principle with natural daylight called hard on the body, soft on the face. And so what you can do here, and you see it all the time in movies, all the time. Once you notice it, it's it's like impossible to unsee it. What you can do is have hard light on the body, and you can just start to have the hard light sort of kiss the bottom of the face. Um, and then from there, you can do some beauty light, and the viewer won't notice the beauty light on the face because the hard light is, is sort of selling us psychologically on there's some natural light coming into the scene. Start with hard light. Uh, this is as bright as it gets, unfortunately. I would probably do it a little bit brighter, but this is as bright as it gets. Okay, and then what I've done next is I have an X100. Let's power that on. And I have powered the X100 on to 100%. It is filling in the room a little bit. That's okay. Um, we can actually even stop down on those windows just a little bit more. I'm sorry, I don't have exact stop numbers for you there. Um, and then what I've done is I've had just one of these little mini 5 and ones um, and it almost looks like reflected light in this way. I have the light lower and it looks like this hard light, which is hitting the body hard on the body is sort of reflecting back off the ground at me in sort of a soft way. So I'm actually going to bring this in a little bit, soften it up a bit more. Let's see if I can wrap it a little more. Um, and I'm actually going to raise it up a little bit. It's a little too shadowy for my taste. Just adjust that. Okay, and that's the shot. Yeah, so it feels like maybe there's a window over there and there's some natural light coming in and the window tells us that that's where the light's coming from. And then I, I'm getting hard on the body here and then some nice soft reflected light. And you can actually do reflected light. I do that often. You can have actual reflected light, but in this case, I'm running it through diffusion because I wanted this nice quality of light. So I do a similar setup to this quite often and I uh, hope this helps. Okay, so we've gone through those lighting scenarios. We've a little bit been able to see the limitations of these lights from Jiyun, especially this X60. You know, this was the main focus for this video. But I just wanna give you my general thoughts, pros and cons real quick on this light. Obvious pros, it's tiny, it's compact. It's a 60 watt powerful bright light RGB in this tiny, beautiful little package. It does have a built-in fan, which keeps it cooler. 
It's just another innovative, surprising, fun little light from Jiyun. It's fantastic for background lighting. It's fantastic for fill lighting. It's for fantastic as a kicker light. Uh, it could be used as a key light. I don't think it's necessarily the most ideal light as a key light. Generally, I'd go with something more powerful, but absolutely there are situations in which you could use it as a key light. So for run and gun, low budget projects, fantastic. What are the downsides? Well, it's bright, but it's not that bright. I mean, you saw that daylight test that I did. I pushed it to full 100 and it was bright enough for the purposes of the shot, but we could have really used a brighter light there. So uh, hopefully Jiyun makes some, some big boy lights soon, but I don't think that's the intention of this light. A couple other issues that I have with this light. The fan, super loud. It wasn't noticeable on the microphones I was wearing, but depending on the microphones you're using, the environment you're in, this fan might be too loud, especially for a key light, but that's not a problem for every kind of shoot. It just depends on the type of shoot that you're doing. Another con to this light, the on off button functionality absolutely drives me nuts with many of these Jiyun lights because there's sort of a prompting. Often it'll be like hold down long press and then short press or long press and then turn the knob. No, just give me on and off switch. Uh, when you're on set, when sometimes you're reaching above your head, when sometimes you break for lunch and you need to restrike the lights, uh, it just needs to be as efficient and simple as possible. I don't want to have to be retaught by the light how to turn it on. So Jiyun, I love what you're doing, but as you make more lights, please consider simplifying. Also the sort of menu design, just not super intuitive. I also had to sort of click through the language choice of the menu every time I powered on the light. Huge slowdown when you're on set, which a little bit defeats the purpose of having such a lightweight run and gun light. So maybe there will be firmware updates, and I don't know, but I think this is something that needs to be fixed for future Jiyun lights. The other thing, fantastic, that you can have a battery. Love that. Downside is the battery lasts for 55 minutes, which maybe you have use cases where that's perfectly adequate. I, you know, for any narrative project, you know, 55 minutes is just not going to cut it unless I'm like, let me grab this one shot real quick, you know, potentially that's an option, but otherwise 55 minutes is just too short. The options there, love that the options there, but I would love longer battery life if there was any way in which that was possible. Otherwise, fantastic light, very versatile, very innovative. Keep doing what you're doing. Next, these M20s are so cool. And I'm sure you guys have seen these. These are 20 watts each. This one's RGB, this one's bicolor. For their size, they're super bright. These things are so versatile. Think the Aperture M20s just with way more options. Having the barn doors, fantastic. If you're doing product shots, if you're doing little uh, background flourishes, just being able to shape that light very quickly. It's high quality built and feel. And then just the modularity, I can like magnet tiles, strip away the matte box magnetically, and then there's a honeycomb grid, and then I can strip that down, and then there's diffusion layer, and then there's another layer of diffusion, and I can restack those in any which order that I want. On top of that, you know, you guys saw me essentially just attach this to the inside of a light, having all this magnetic capability, so versatile, so fun. And then beyond that, it might look a little bulky to you and you're like, well, the aperture lights are much more thin and slim. Well, that's because it's in a cage. So there's a whole other layer of versatility to it. So these lights, I mean, do they have downsides? Sure, they're loud. The fans are really loud on them. They run off of batteries. There's limitations with that. But otherwise, these lights are so awesome. I think they're only like 120 bucks. So definitely worth having in your kit if you're looking for some of those flourish lights. And maybe you're building out the Jiyun kit, especially with like a lot of the travel shoots that I do and having to keep things compact. More and more, I'm like, man, I'm liking the Jiyun ecosystem and it's nice to sort of have all your lights on one app. Not without pros and cons, but I love what they're doing and I can't wait for them to start making some bigger, brighter lights as well. And as always, these are fantastic products, but don't think because I am reviewing them or using them that I am asking you to purchase them. I do have links for these products, uh, which of course I would welcome you to use if you're already looking to buy these products or you're looking to support my channel. But otherwise, I don't want you to ever watch my videos and feel pressured to buy something that is not the purpose of these videos. So thank you all for watching. And if you like what you saw, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.